Hi there, this is Groovy and G, and welcome back to my channel. As you can hear, I've got a bit of a raspy voice, and so that's why it's taken me a while to get around to this video. I've just been waiting until I can talk a little bit again, but I think we're nearly there now, and I'm excited to bring you a big deconstruction of the phrase editor and all the useful things you could do with it, and the way I like to use it. I like to work mainly in this pattern editor, and a lot of the stuff I'll do is just in here. And I actually use the phrase editor for a kind of a bunch of useful techniques and effects and to save away stuff. So let's just jump into the first thing. I've actually jumped a little bit ahead with my tutorial, but I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to come back and put this at the start. And I just want to explain the features of the phrase editor first. And hopefully then when I'm talking about everything, you'll, you'll actually be able to follow. So... The phrase editor is basically like a mini version of this main pattern editor window with a few differences. So one of the differences is the phrase editor is unique to each instrument. Each instrument has their own phrase editor and you can actually save this away and it will save away with the instrument. What else is unique? Well, the lines per beat is at unique. So the lines per beat will work independently in this window from your main window. And I'll get into lo lots of that later, but it's very, very useful having this. It, it basically means you can change the resolution of the beats. And, and so you can get more detailed with where you're placing your notes. But you don't have to lose the resolution in the main window, which can get really confusing. Like if you crank this up to 16, it's just everything moves so quickly. that Like I just find it really hard programming with, with everything going so quickly. I like working at four and then nudging stuff around is how I've kind of got used to using Renoise. The lines per beat is unique. The resolution here of the actual number of lines, the phrase length and lines is also unique to the, the 64 there. If I put this up to 128, it's actually, this is still gonna be 64. So the number of lines inside the phrase editor is also unique. You've got a couple of other options here, the shuffle, which is how much Renoise will delay the offbeats. And I will make a video about nudging and shuffle in Renoise in the future. But all you've got to remember is that this is working on the offbeats. And the more you drag this up, the more it's going to nudge all these offbeats forwards in time. So that's how that's working. Auto seek, while well, we go through these things one by one, it's just going to make the phrases uh, sync up with your main window a lot better. And I, I don't mess with that too much, but I do, I do leave it on. This is a looping so that if you have this on, it will just continuously loop the, if I put like a, like a four bar thing in here, uh, let's do, actually do eight bar. And uh, let's trigger it in the main window. So it's just gonna loop and loop and loop and loop and loop. But if I play it once and I turn that off, then it's just going to play it once. One thing about the phrase editor is if you press enter, you're triggering it, the phrase editor here. So if you press enter, it's going to play the phrase editor. But you can also actually just put a note in, in this main pattern window, which, which is going to trigger the phrase editor in program mode at the moment. And it basically just means you can you can use spacebar to trigger the phrase editor, which is how I am so used to all the programs I use. I use spacebar to start the playback, and I find it very confusing to have to use enter to do it. So I actually prefer to put a note in here to trigger the phrase, and then I can just use spacebar to trigger this phrase while I'm working. So I find that very useful. And that's really it. All this panning and delay stuff is kind of the same. The sample, you don't really have to think too much about. The sample is just telling you, like if I drag another sample in here, it's just going to tell you which sample. So now it's like triggering C, but then it's triggering C01. So it's working more how the like slices kind of works, where you're triggering slice one, slice two, slice three. It's working more like that. I actually just leave this off. So really the main things to remember there is that a lot of this lines per beat, the shuffle and the lines, actual number of lines inside a phrase, they're all unique to the phrases and they're actually unique to each phrase as well. So I can bank this one up 
and these are going to be different. So they're unique to every individual phrase, and that's what you've got to remember there. What I think is the, one of the biggest mysteries of, or uh, one of the things that took me ages and ages to get a grip on, is how these modes are working in the phrase editor. It's very simply, when you have when you have it off, the phrase editor is actually doing nothing. It's, it's you can just trigger normally in this window and now I'm playing C3 and C, C sharp 3 to trigger so that's working as if there was no phrase editor on if I have program on triggering the phrase I'm sending C4 here in this main window and C4 which you can see this little dot here is actually triggering the phrase in program mode it's triggering the phrase as it is so you just just remember like c4 is the one you put in to trigger the phrase and what it's actually going to do is it's going to trigger the phrase i have selected so if i have three and i go so i have so now i'm pressing spacebar and sending c4 and it's triggering this the c3 but if i select not two it's actually going to trigger this one so whichever one you've got selected that c4 is going to trigger in program mode when this gets interesting is i can actually tell renoise to trigger different phrases using the z command so the z command is the trigger phrase and you just have to put the phrase number so if i want to trigger phrase two for this one and i want to trigger phrase three for this one now what i've told renoise is to trigger phrase number two and then phrase number three and that's pretty obvious you can see number two there number three but because i've still got phrase number two selected which is highlighted in green if i just put in C4 again, it's actually going to trigger it's going to trigger phrase number two, so if you're not using the Z command it's going to trigger your selected phrase and if you use the Z command then it's going to, you can tell Renoise which phrase you want to trigger, so that is how program is working, now what is a little bit confusing, I think, with program mode is if I trigger C sharp, if I actually go um, and just put nudge this up one semitone, what it actually does is it plays everything from like a semitone higher. So what it's actually just done there is it's played C sharp, C sharp, and then nothing because there's nothing in D. If I show you a bit more in depth, if I chuck some more stuff in here and I go and map them all out to drum kit, they've actually done that nicely. Cool, so you're seeing this is playing because I'm triggering C4, it's triggering perfectly, okay? It's triggering as I've written it in the phrase editor, but if I go and trigger C sharp 4, it's actually going to start to now these C's are going to become C sharps, the C sharp's going to become a D, and it's going to transpose them all. And you can see it working up here. And it's actually transposed them all. So you've you've created like a different a different um combination of the notes by transposing everything up and down. You can also set it to offset. Now I won't go too much into that, but offset is actually going to if you have this little instruction thing. Your key position controls the offset that the phrase gets triggered from. So if I'm playing each note now rather than transposing it up and down it's actually nudging where I'm starting the phrase editor from which is pretty crazy because you can obviously come in here and what I've done here is I'm just triggering this phrase editor at different points and and from like C naught which is the lowest I can go on my keyboard and renoise all the way up to C sharp 5 and that's how this offset thing's working but I don't want to focus too much on that because I don't use the offset very much 
Finally, I want to talk about key map. Now, key map is a really, really cool mode when you want to live jam the stuff you've got in Renoise. So, key map mode works where you can you have to drag your phrases onto the keyboard here, and that's actually two notes. If I just drag it in and And now each of these keys is triggering a different phrase. So all I've done here actually is I've where I've put my, my keys, my key map, I've actually put them on top of the notes that are triggering the drum kit. And that is why I'm having this problem. And I think it's useful for me to like go through why things aren't working properly because I'm sure some of you will be making these same kind of mistakes inside of Renoise. So annoyingly, there's no auto map for this. You, you just have to click and drag. But what you get with key map is, is you get this workflow where I can have my key map up here. And actually I can trigger I can trigger the, the phrases, the different phrases, but I also have access to the individual chops like I had before. So on my on my key zones, I still have these chops mapped down here and I have access to the phrases above. So you can combine using just straight up, you know, triggering the drums. If I go now and I go up two octaves, these are all triggering the phrases. And then if I go down to, uh, to C3. I'm mixing using the phrases with just triggering individual slices. And so key map mode gives you a lot of flexibility like that. Program mode, you haven't got that flexibility. In program mode, you, you're just triggering the phrases. I want to show you another thing you can do while we're here is before I was showing you how in program mode you can use this offset to offset where the, the actual phrase editor is starting. Well, in both program and key map mode, you can also do this another way. When you're triggering a phrase, the slice command is actually going to trigger the phrase at the slice number you put in. So if I put in slice number four, I'm triggering the first one on I five O. So I'm actually triggering there. If I go and put this, oh yeah, triggering number four. So I'm starting line number four here. And it's playing from four down. So if I go and press number two there, it's now starting from line number two. It's a little bit confusing when you're going from program to key map and you just like got to really get your head around it. So I'm triggering C sharp, C, C, C sharp D. C, C sharp D. D is my third one. I can click on it there. And then I can see I've got this pattern. Maybe I double this up like this. Yes. Okay. And I want to trigger it from line number six. So I go number six. So you can create like so many mental variations of your original phrase is what I'm getting at. Like it's really insane. You can mess with the lines per beat. as you're going to create different rhythms and you can obviously save it all away. I've been banging that one home. Yeah, one thing to note is with the slice command is it's still gonna work in the hexadecimal way. To trigger line number 12, I'd have to write it as S naught C rather than writing it as S12, which you would think like send it to line 12, but that's not how Renoise works. So. I've kind of gone through key map versus program there and just to rehash it, program mode, anything you have selected in program mode, if, you, if you're triggering this, this number here, C4, it's gonna play through as you've written it and the one you've got selected, by triggering C4 in this window, it's just gonna play through that phrase okay so whichever one you've got selected it will play through and then if you want to change the phrase you can use the Z command 
to choose which phrase you want to trigger. So I'm triggering the second phrase and then the third one. So it's going to play second and then the third. You can also use the slice command in this window. So this is going to trigger nothing now. It's going to play from line eight. So you can use the slice command as well as the Z command with program mode, and just li and that and that means you don't have to bother with this offset one because you can you can do the offset in this window. If I was going to say when I use the two differently, I use key map mode a lot more when I'm playing live, and program mode when I'm just trying to get something in there quickly or using like a, effects or something. I think yeah, I, I usually default to the program mode, and then if I've created something I want to jam out. Uh, and record it and then I'll go to key map mode and yeah key map mode the advantages are that you you can both program your individual slices still and you can program all the phrases all in one instrument and that gives you a lot of flexibility if you want to jump between the two quickly I just want to talk about some of the disadvantages of the phrase editor one of them obviously it's a little bit fiddly and it can be quite confusing jumping between all of these phrases and instruments and pattern windows and commands and so I use the phrase editor quite sparingly I use it for drums mainly and effects mainly and that's kind of the main focus I use it for a couple of other things is some of your hotkeys won't work like quantize if I show you here for me quantize doesn't work in the phrase editor whereas in here it's command Q but in the phrase editor it's not actually selected as anything maybe I need to go into my hotkeys and and change that but some of your things weren't working you also don't have access to this advanced panel where you can do all this shrinking and flipping and expanding you've got to kind of right click to these options a thing that really annoyed me for a long time is having to press enter to play the phrase but I've shown you how you can kind of program something in in this window so you just have to press spacebar. Another one that kind of gets to me is you have to enter notes in with your computer keyboard. You can't press your MIDI keyboard. If you play your MIDI keyboard, you can see it triggers. It's triggering kind of how, it, how it's going to play in the main window, but you can't actually use it to enter in notes. So I find that can be quite frustrating. And then finally, you don't have access to your tools inside of the phrase editor so I can't use my nudge tool and I can't use my randomizer tool and things like that so in some of my previous videos I've shown you how you can kind of create patterns in this window and then copy them over to the phrase editor and that's something I do quite a lot as well let's just jump into the first thing as you can see on my screen I've got this collection of notes here and this is actually how you do triplets inside of Renoise this is the kind of formula for it where you're fitting three notes inside of four sixteenth notes now what I like is I've got this the sixteenth note rhythm and what I like to use the phrase editor for here is actually just to paste see what I did there right is I copied this in but then when I went to the phrase editor and pasted it it didn't actually show me any of the delay values, you've got to have this delay column turned on and then when you paste, it's going to then going to paste everything in properly. And same for panning and volume as well. So now we've got a nice 16th note triplet pattern here. What I can actually do is I can just copy and I've just focused this area and then Command D and duplicated that pattern. And then I can just change the li lines per beat and the lines per beat in the phrase editor works independently to the lines per beat in the main window. So if I change this down to two, it's not actually affected the main window. And so now, I've got an eighth note triplet in my phrase editor super easily and I haven't had to, had to affect the resolution of the main window. So you can go further with this and you could go down to one or you could go up to maybe eight, and that's kind of a, a 30 second note one, and then maybe we'll just put one more in, you know, and I'm just like, so these will be like random kind of uh, variations of, of, 
triplets, they'll be working differently because now I'm fitting like all these notes in in ten lines, and then or in eleven. But it still sounds good. But it's actually it's not it's not triplets unless you're doubling. So like two will be triplets, four will be triplets, two, four, eight, and then sixteen would be sixty fourth note triplets, which sounds quite mental. But the great thing about this is I can actually just save this pattern away now. And even though it's done with a rim, if I just save it away and I have this one called effects and then I just go, let's call this triplets. And I've just saved this as a instrument instead of renoise. And what I can do now is if I'm on a blank track, I can just load in this instrument very easily. Okay, so we're back here. We've got our phrases again. And I can just drop other sounds in here and now I can just create triplets with any sound I want really easily. The next technique I did actually show you in one of my last tutorials is uh, the time stretching one. Now I've got this time stretch effects that I created in a previous tutorial where I showed you how to do this kind of granular time stretching effect. And I've been using this all the time actually. It's just so easy because I can just select that a bank instrument, load it up, and then just chuck any instrument on. And then I've got to trigger it again. And you can just create really cool effects straight away. If you've got like a, a perfect bar of anything, like if I chuck a drum break in here. Cool, and so now, if I want to time stretch this, so that's gone super slow. All I've had to do is chuck a break in there that I've chopped to a perfect two bar, four bar, whatever it is, and I've already made all these presets that will just warp it to my song. And you can obviously uh, beat sync it, That's how it sounds beat synced, and then this is how it sounds time stretched. So we've got triplets, we've got time stretching. You can also do pretty cool drum fills. So I've created a cool tom, rolling tom fill there. I could take this, and because I've got it, I can speed it up, or I can slow it down. So just very simply, you can create these these fills. Maybe I do like a um, a volume from like twenty to eighty, and I go and select that and interpolate it. And you know, you can save you you can save this away. You know, I could have gone a lot deeper there and created a whole bunch of different fills with this instrument. One more thing I want to show you, which is I think is very handy. We go back to this Bowman break. It's a nice break. We like it. We want to use it. You can do a few things. You can, if I put some slice markers in, so let's go and put slice markers in. So I've gone and sliced this Bowman break at all its hits now. I'm actually going to take this one out, that little rolling thing, and just leave that out. So what you can do is you can right click slices render slices the phrase so what it's done now is it's created a phrase and if i press enter you're like oh what's happening there it's really quick well if i slow down the lines per beat to eight maybe Now it's working. So when you render the phrases, it's just going to act weirdly sometimes and you've got to mess with this lines per beat to get it to kind of fit to your song. So there it was kind of playing twice the speed it needed to be. As you can see here, it's it's got quite detailed. It's gone to lines per beat 8 in order to be able to fit in all of the delay values to make this this break actually roll because we've got lots of stuff that's like a little bit off the grid it's it's had to up the resolution to be able to accurately reproduce that inside of renoise and by containing this inside 
a phrase editor, like I explained before, you can have the lines per beat at a different value to your main window. And so you can kind of have this better resolution to get the drum bait sounding perfect in this phrase editor. You can also do other things like if I if I wanted to take this, for instance, and I could go and select it all and I could go selection and shrink. And now if I go back to lines per bar four, See, it doesn't sound. So it's actually had to miss out a kind of a note there in between D sharp, D, F, E. It's missed out like an E somewhere. Right, let's try. So let's try and like, now I'm just actually patching it in. There we go. Let's make this. That's a bit better. So when I shrunk it, I actually had a bit of a hard time. It kind of it kind of lost the note, so I've had to patch it up a little bit there. So, so what I've got now is this this same pattern with less resolution. But then I could, for instance, take this into my main window. So to get from the phrase editor to the main window, you copy you copy out the phrase editor and you can paste it in one of these tracks. And then I can actually go and just put press nor eight uh, nor eight. To show it, I'm playing instrument uh, eight here. So I've put nor eight in where the instrument column is. So I'm pressing Alt and Shift, and I'm just selecting this nor eight. Control C, Control P, and then paste continuously. So I'm just making sure that every note that's playing in this window is triggering instrument eight. And now I've got from the phrase editor to my, my main window. And and if I actually go sorry if I go back and enlarge again, you can start to like chop chop this up a bit. So if I go down one two three four five six seven uh, like that, maybe paste like eight in, and then you can start to like mess with it a little bit. And if I just play the second part uh, like that, maybe no, it wants to be there, doesn't it? And just copying and pasting, you can start to create new patterns and you're still keeping all this kind of original swing and we're working at the four lines per beat. So, so you can kind of get things running and maintain the integrity of the breaks. You can also, we've got this pattern, what we can do is we could go and duplicate this and we can actually quantize this. So selection quantize here will work, okay. So this note wants to go up a beat. So now this is actually a perfectly quantized version of this drum break. And if I um, if I wanted now, and I could actually just select this, go like this, render to sample even, you can see it's got these gaps. Now these were, weren't hit before, these are kind of been created because we've we've cropped everything to be on beat and what it will mean is that every chop is bang on beat you know one of the things about renoise is because you're always working on this like quantized 16th note kind of beat pattern I think it works a, a lot better to have nicely quantized breaks than to have stuff going all over the place and you know it will sound a lot cleaner. Okay so as per usual I'm going to leave you with the little track as an outro here um, just because they're fun to make and I like kind of once I've got done and done one of these tutorials I like exploring the kind of techniques I've used. And here I've really actually just used one of the main things I've used is I've got this hi-hat yeah, I've got it playing a dotted quarter note pattern, which I think sounds really cool for a hi-hat. And yeah, it's got a real nice groove and I've just used the phrase editor here and I've kind of done some patterns if I show you here. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and it's a very dense one today. 
hopefully it all makes sense and if it doesn't hit me up in the comments and i will do another video and try and explain it a little bit better peace people call me a gangster i didn't like it one guy called me a gangster so i stuck a gun in his mouth and uh, i said look i'm a businessman and my business is crime dangerous and they shoot them. Tomorrow, go and get Kennedy. That was my sign of shock. I said I want one chamber, one build with rock salt and the other one with an old bunch of